so uh, this block will be facilitated by Gabrielle as soon as she's back inviting people in. And uh, I have the first part of the session. Uh, we will be uh, talking uh, non-stop for an hour and a half on topics of education. Uh, but I hope it will be, we will be talking, not just uh, a few facilitators. Thank you. I couldn't start without, uh, without him, I think. <laughs> um, so, my name is Vahid. I work at the Wikimedia Foundation uh, in the education team. What we do is try to support, thank you, the more the merrier. Uh, we try to support at the foundation volunteers that want to take on uh, education initiatives. So what does that mean? It means that uh, all around the world, uh, different communities have found and different volunteers have found that it can be quite interesting to engage with students, students of elementary school, high school, university level, and even beyond, uh, to engage with those students and work with them and uh, have uh, work in a systematic fashion to train them on how to edit. So we, we are going to see a few examples of this uh, around the world and uh, in this presentation I'd like to talk about the trending topics uh, of education so what is uh, fashionable or interesting to discuss in 2017 when we're looking at education programs so I will give several examples of trending topics in education in education programs and uh, I welcome uh, comments and examples that you may want to give regarding those uh, trending topics in, in education so, um, the first idea that I think is very interesting and would like to invite the CE to explore uh, in a more systematic fashion is working with graduate programs of education. So, graduate programs usually are masters and especially PhD programs. Uh, this is quite interesting because of uh, two reasons. One reason is uh, PhD students are highly qualified experts usually in the topic they're working on. So they can make specific contributions that are very interesting for our Wikipedias, our projects. And so it's uh, quite interesting to work specifically with those programs uh, in, in education as one way to do. We have uh, lots of experience around the world at, uh, let's say, pre-graduate level, so uh, let's say general university level. We have also quite good experience with high schools. So we know how those programs work, but this idea of PhD programs or master's program and working with them in a systematic fashion is a newer idea. It's an idea that we have not explored so much, but uh, Sweden and Germany in particular are two leaders that are experimenting with this. And the invitation here is for other countries to consider how they can approach those PhD programs or those graduate programs and try to systematically train those PhD students to, uh, on how to edit and do what we call uh, scientific um, vulgarization, dissemination, uh, because that's usually one of the uh, weaknesses that PhD programs have. How do they share more knowledge about their topic? One quick announcement, in case anyone's missed it and wants to go to the introduction to Wikidata, that's starting in the corner right now. <laughs> or you can stay with education, it's okay. Also going if you're not sure. But yeah, if you like Asaf's voice, please feel free to go. Um, so that's one first idea I wanted to share. And uh, as I said, there are two uh, countries leading, uh, two affiliates uh, leading in that experience. And uh, I would like to invite more uh, affiliates to explore the possibility of systematically going out, finding out what the PhD programs are in their countries or their cities and trying to engage in the possibility of training uh, the participants, the PhD students, uh, in how to use the, the Wikipedia. And of course, by how to use, I mean how to edit, because uh, those PhD students usually will be very capable of identifying content gaps, and they, will be, uh, it, they can easily make it one of their own tasks to share an, uh, general knowledge regarding those specific content gaps. 
And the added bonus that we have when we work with PhD students is that we're almost sure that in 90% of the cases, the PhD students will become university professors. So if we have already trained them to, be, to edit Wikipedia, it's easier for them to then use uh, Wikipedia as a teaching tool. And of course, we know that teachers are really the key to a sustained education program. If we train them right, they will train their students with little effort on our side. So that was the first idea I wanted to share. I don't know if there are questions, uh, comments regarding this. No? How many of you are still awake right now? Could you raise your hands? Okay, good. So next idea. Um, uh, the, uh, something that we have to do as a movement is to convince teachers that, yes, uh, using Wikipedia in the classroom is good. And uh, if you have ever talked with a teacher, uh, it's hard to convince them. Uh, usually they'll go with, you know, Wikipedia is not reliable, or we're not sure if uh, Wikipedia is a good tool for our students, blah, blah, blah. So what we need to do is convince the teachers that, yes, this is an effective teaching tool. So uh, what we need to do more and more is to assess and evaluate and uh, be able to prove that there is an impact on the students learning when they participate in a Wikipedia program. So uh, this is something that has begun and we have done it in different ways. One particular example is this research that was carried out in the US and, and Canada. Um, I invite you to look up the report. It's on Commons uh, for you to, to look at. Commons meta is on Commons. Uh, that's right. It's on Commons in this case. And uh, they've done a, a research with over a thousand students, almost a hundred teachers, a hundred professors, uh, regarding what the impact was in the students in participating in an education program. So whenever you are carrying out an education program, I would like to invite you to try to measure some of the impact. What happened to the students when they were participating in uh, an education program? Did they learn uh, more about critical thinking? We have lots of anecdotal experience regarding what the students learn. We know that they develop critical thinking, they develop academic writing, academic research. All those skills are developed, uh, but we need to have harder evidence, not just an, ex an example that, yes, I had one student that did this and that, but to have a more global uh, research. So if we can show that in the US, the students learn this, in Serbia, the students learn that, in, Norwe in, in, Norwe in Norwegia, the students uh, learn this, we can progressively accumulate evidence and show that worldwide there's an impact whenever students are using uh, the Wikipedia. And so uh, this is, uh, we have to focus that on two levels. One, of course, is what is the student learning that is the key, but also what are the teachers learning? Because uh, to convince teachers, usually it's very useful for a teacher to hear from another teacher what worked in his classroom. So uh, if we can also assess or evaluate what the teachers are learning through the process, we can improve our method of working with them, and also we can tell the teachers, look, what the teachers are saying is this and that and this, and it works for the teachers, right? So this is a, a second idea that I, I wanted to propose. Still awake? Yeah. Still awake. Good. <laughs> Third idea. Yeah? You have a uh, comment? Yeah. Is, it, is it reliable when we do research by ourselves? Because if we present... Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, because I read the article about the great. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah. sorry. Uh, my question was if the research is reliable because we make the research by ourselves. So if we present the results, public can doubt about the results. So that's my question. Perfect. So uh, I would say that the bare minimum is that we should do research ourselves. But uh, remember I was uh, talking about reaching out to PhD programs. If we can specifically go for the PhDs in education, we can try to grab one or two of those PhDs uh, students in education and have them do the research on our programs. <laughs> So we can go not just uh, generally speaking about wh uh, why PhD students are interesting for us, but also if we can specifically go for uh, PhDs in education, then we can try to put them to do their research in uh, our field. So that might, might be one way to, to do this. So yeah, there, there, uh, if we are saying it, it's limited evidence, <laughs> but it's better than no evidence. So we should at least try to do that so that we learn ourselves and can share those limited experience. And if we can have external evaluation, of course, 
the more the better. So the third idea, um, we're working uh, at the education team on, on this possibility to certify teachers. Uh, that's something that is still quite new, but if we want to be systematic about our work, and by systematic I mean worldwide systematic, we need to start to think what are the common points that every teacher that is using Wikipedia as an education tool should know. And uh, what are the minimal practices, the, the, the ways of acting in the classroom that all teachers should be aware of. And uh, we are thinking that if we can give some kind of certification, so one example is open badges, uh, that might be of uh, assistance. You're familiar with open badges? Or have yeah. a question? Yeah. You have the mic or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have to okay. push the button. At the bottom? Okay, there. <laughs> There's only one button. Please. That's too much for me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm from Finland. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That explains everything. Okay. So, uh, we're actually doing this with teachers right now in, in Finland. Because we're, ma we're making a, a, in Wikibooks, we are creating all the, the, the materials for teachers to teach. So they don't have to buy books anymore. But they are doing the, the books uh, uh, cooperatively in there. And uh, when we have had some uh, edit atoms, now we are giving, giving them open patches for that. Fantastic. So, so we need to talk so more. So you stole our idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to bring the trending topic. So you're ahead of the curve. So congratulations on that. Yeah. I wanted to mention also that uh, Wikimedia Serbia has a great experience training teachers. And so um, within CE, that might be some uh, and someone to talk to if you want to go beyond uh, a little bit ahead in this idea of uh, how do we certify teachers? This is still very new, but uh, let's say that by 2030 we might have um, a global certification system for all teachers that want to use Wikipedia as an education tool, right? So that was a third idea. Let's move on to a fourth idea. How do we care for uh, smaller languages? I know smaller languages sounds a little bit uh, pejorative or negative in some contexts. Uh, Lesser used languages or smaller communities of speakers might be another way to, to say that. Um, it's quite interesting for us at the education team to see how, uh, even at the last Wikimania, we had uh, Farhad, who is not here, but uh, belongs to see, uh, explaining how uh, valuable Wikipedia was to uh, help the cultures represent themselves and express, express themselves online. And um, I wanted to share two examples. The bottom example is in uh, Bolivia. Uh, they have this indigenous uh, group that is developing their own Wikipedia in their own language, which is uh, Aymara. And uh, it's a very interesting experience on how uh, people that usually have, uh, let's say, they're, they're more of an oral culture, not a, a really written culture, uh, how they are engaging uh, with university students that are native uh, Aymara speakers, uh, engaging with them so that they can uh, start building up their own uh, Wikipedia. And that's something that, of course, uh, is very valuable. And when we're talking about being uh, truly global, this is one of the ideas. How do we help smaller communities achieve this presence online. And another interesting example is the uh, Basque group that's in northern Spain. Uh, they're also a minority language within Spain, uh, but interestingly, they've uh, managed to uh, make a pro present a project, submit a project to uh, the Basque government, the Basque regional government, and they've received funds, considerable funds actually, to develop the Wikipedia for the needs of high school students in uh, the Basque language. So uh, in that way, they're not dependent only on the foundation to receive funds. They've also got uh, other additional funds from their government to develop 1,000 articles in a three-year period that are focused on the needs of the curriculum, the school curriculum that they have in the Basque country. So uh, this is uh, probably close, a closer example than uh, the Aymar example. But uh, the idea is that we can take care of smaller languages uh, and smaller uh, language communities within our countries and help them represent themselves and at the same time align this with educational needs that are pretty concrete and can be done together with uh, the education governments 
uh, agreeing on what are the list of topics, of key topics they want to work on. And actually the way they're going to write the 1,000 articles is by training university students to write those articles. So that way they're connecting uh, the educational needs of uh, high school and elementary school and training at the same time uh, higher education students to participate in this process. Okay, so that's the third idea. How do we help uh, make sure that those uh, smaller communities can also represent themselves online? And we are offering them, of course, a tool which is the um, Wikimedia platform. So next idea, I'll be very short on this one. We have Susana among us that will present it later, but uh, when you are thinking strategically about uh, education programs, uh, Armenia is a quite interesting example of having a, a complete thought about how to work or, and interact with an education system. So I won't go into details, but you can see all these bubbles here. They represent different elements of an education system. And Armenia has ha been working systematically in how to uh, interact with those, those different elements. Uh, and that will be, become, in, in time, a sustainable environment for the Wikipedians to uh, grow into and participate in constantly. So that's an example I'd like to uh, draw your attention to, and of course we'll listen to Susanna in a few minutes. And uh, the next trending topic is MOOCs. MOOCs are the massive open online courses, so online learning as uh, most of us have, have heard of it. I wanted to share two examples uh, regarding uh, the use of online courses to train students and teachers. The first one is from Argentina called Wikipuentes. They've been uh, having a number of iterations of uh, training courses that are focused specifically on teachers. They have a pretty good alliance with an education uh, organism from the government, the Argentinian government, and that allows them to work with teachers uh, and train the teachers on how to edit Wikipedia. And of course, once the teachers learn how to edit Wikipedia, they help the teachers create a program, uh, uh, a class activity, so that they can, the, stu the teachers can work with their students on, on Wikipedia and uh, Wikimedia. So uh, this has been going on for a number of years, and now they've been able to uh, reach agreements with uh, Wikimedia Chile and Wikimedia Venezuela so that they can reuse some of the contents that they've produced, or even in the case of Chile, use the complete platform and adapt it to the needs of their teachers and their curriculum in their countries. So that's uh, an example too that you might want to look at. And uh, it's a way, it's let's say a fairly low cost way to reach a great number of teachers, right? Um, in uh, 2018, we expect that at least those uh, uh, other two countries will also uh, be deploying that platform, and maybe even other countries such as Mexico are considering implementing that. So, it could uh, for IberoCup, so the Latin American region, it will be uh, a very inter interesting trend to be training teachers online and uh, um, stimulating those teachers to apply those tools they learn about in their classrooms. Another interesting example is uh, the Wiki Edu Foundation, which works exclusively in, in North America. Um, it, I, I want to mention that just for the numeric example. With 10 staff, every uh, school period, they work with 10,000 student, uh, uh, students. Yeah. So uh, in terms of impact, that's a very interesting number. In terms of uh, content they have uploaded, the, the students have uploaded, it's also uh, an interesting trend. So uh, really, uh, this idea of online courses might be one way we can really reach out to great numbers. And uh, it might be worth it to discuss within your affiliates if that makes sense and which kind of models you want to use and how to ensure quality in an online course, which is still something we're all learning about in the world, right? So that was the next idea. Comments, questions on this? Please? Well, I think it's uh, also possible to reach out to many universities who provide uh, online courses uh, on platforms like uh, Edex or Coursera, which uh, typically, besides the videos, uh, use uh, links to the articles about topics that uh, they teach through the courses. So it's not only just to make an online course about uh, Wikipedia and present there, but also to reach out to these institutions, which uh, will definitely make something valuable for the uh, educational program and uh, the whole movement. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, that's something that we have not tried out yet, right? Reaching out to edX or Coursera or one of those. We definitely need to consider it. Yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, 
we have very good uh, experiences about MOOCs in, in, in Finland with, with teachers. You can hear my voice? Yes. 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 Maybe yes. online they can hear you. That's, uh, I, okay, online. If okay. I don't know if, if it's there. Yeah. Online, yeah. If they're online, yeah. If they're online, it's okay. for me too. Yeah. Okay. Now it's <laughs> Okay. Uh, I said that we have very good experiences in Finland about MOOCs and with teachers. Because, you know, now we have in our curriculum the, the programming. So, uh, I was part of the team that we made MOOCs for teachers. And uh, a lot of te teachers, thousands of teachers participated in, in this course. And so, they were completely free, CC license, all the materials. And I think it would be very great with DT uh, Media also to, to know, know the projects. Perfect. So, uh, we uh, have human resources close to CE apparently also. Fantastic. So let me give you um, another idea that's uh, for more of the organizer of the CE community. Um, the Ibero Cup um, uh, organizing group created this uh, world map and are trying to map out where the, pro the education programs are. Of course, this is still in its uh, early beginnings, but it shows uh, you can click on it uh, and, and uh, there's a link there. You can click on it and see a short uh, summary of what the program is. So C might want to look at uh, how Iberocop do, did it and have something similar. It's, uh, it's helpful, again, when we're trying to convince teachers that, yes, this is a good tool. They can look at what different programs do in the world and help them uh, say, oh, okay, maybe if it works in Argentina, if it works in uh, Sweden, if it works in Spain, uh, maybe it's worth to try in, in Slovenia also, right? So this is uh, just one, one quick idea. Okay. Yes? Can I ask you, uh, how many hours is the MOOC? Uh, it's a MOOC that takes about six weeks. The, the Argentinian MOOC takes about six weeks, and it's only for uh, school, te well, the teachers, uh, so from all levels of, of teaching. And um, one key element that they've learned is that uh, you need to have volunteers that will support teachers almost in real time. So that's uh, one key element. You need to really uh, ha uh, hold the hand of the teacher when they're doing their first edits and learning how to manage uh, all the technical aspects. Um, you need to have volunteers that will support those teachers as, as fast as possible. So that's one requirement of, of this, yeah? Okay, so six weeks, but uh, my question is about hours. Per, per week, uh, uh, how many hours per week the teacher must, uh, yeah, I don't have that information, but I can look it up for you. Yeah, okay. So is it available in English or is it only No, this is only in Spanish so far. Do you think yeah. it's possible to, to standardize uh, an online course about Wikipedia in different uh, eventually, we should be able to do that, uh, but the, the, w why this is particularly relevant in education is that this is directed at school, at educators, right? So this is not a general introduction to Wikipedia for everyone how to edit. This is for teachers how to edit and then create a class activity based on that. So that's a specific focus of it. Yeah. Can you show it? I don't, know uh, I, don't know. I don't have access right now, but uh, if you look up Wiki Puentes, uh, yeah. like this, yeah. uh, you, you'll be able to find it, uh, and uh, you need to have uh, to be subscribed to the course to have access to all the materials. <laughs> They're open license and everything, but the, the, you need to be subscribed to, to access it. But later on, uh, maybe I can uh, ask uh, for permission, and uh, I can show you from, from Argentina. Yeah. It's based on Moodle, so it's not a very advanced technology, and actually Venezuela will develop the course on a different platform so uh, to make it more modern. So, so maybe... But, uh, this is, could you ask them if it would be available in English at least? It's just because of, you know... I don't the think they have the manpower, the human power to, uh, to develop, to translate it. But if we find volunteers that can do the Spanish to English translation, uh, yeah, well, that uh, would be great. Uh, I can't make any promises, honestly. <laughs> Yeah. So I uh, have 10 more minutes. Let's move on to uh, another idea. Uh, how do we turn the Wikipedia into an OER? OER uh, uh, is uh, in education are called, uh, is what we call electronic textbooks that are open, right? So instead of having a book with all the exercises and activities, um, the idea is that you have something that is electronic that people can modify and upgrade and update uh, as they want. So it's a big trend in the field of uh, education generally. And uh, one question that uh, I've been trying to think about is 
how do we turn the Wikipedia as it is into an open education resource? So we have very good content, we know this, uh, but it's not uh, a textbook because for a textbook you need all the exercises and activities. And so um, the idea that we are working on and, and trying to develop with uh, Wikimedia Deutschland in particular is to uh, work in a, uh, and create a, t a quiz tool that will be integrated into the Wikipedia. So quiz is usually a multiple answer question uh, or having different activities and exercises that will help you understand more of the content in, uh, that is in an article. So that way a teacher could say, read those 10 articles, do the quizzes, and then you come back and uh, if you're using a flipped classroom model, that means that the students do the, the reading, do the exercises, and uh, before the, they get back into the classroom, the teacher already knows if they've read and what grades they had on their quizzes. So that's uh, a new idea that we're looking at. And uh, it could take the form of a new tab that we could have in the, in the Wikipedia interface where people would click about, uh, on learn more and have these quizzes about the content of the article. So that's one idea we're exploring. It could also be an external uh, website with exercises re uh, connected to the Wikipedia. We're looking at possibilities. You had a comment there? Yeah, this is something which already exists on Wikipedia. So if you go there, especially on the English Wikipedia, you can find uh, uh, many materials about uh, mathematics, physics, and chemistry with these uh, questions, exercises. And uh, there was even an idea by the community, so it's not a big community in the English Wikibooks, who tried to transfer all the information to Wikiversity and to develop a learning uh, uh, environment there. Uh, I don't know how it ended, it was like six or seven years ago. I know that these materials, uh, these learning materials uh, still exist on the English Wikibooks and they're even updated and improved, but. Uh, uh, one idea is to try to integrate what we already have in Wikibooks in Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't say it's a good idea to create something new when we already have something on the other Wikimedia projects. Yeah, the, the only thing that might be, let's say, newer is that uh, we, could, we are thinking about connecting this to Wikidata so that we can more and more uh, have a, permanent, um, a permanently linked set of quizzes to um, the, the articles and uh, of course because we are uh, the wikis we, are, we will be inviting teachers and students to create the quizzes regarding each article. So that will be another way to interact with the education systems is to invite the teachers, hey look at this article, can you think of quizzes we could add to this? And of course have, uh, the teachers will have their students also participate in the creation of this type of exercises. you have a comment? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Screen, yeah. Okay, uh, as I told before, we did it already in Finland. All right. So we have it in, in, in Wikibooks <laughs> and we have Wikidata uh -huh. inside already, yes. We are using Wikidata and uh, the, who are doing the materials are teachers and also the pupils. They're doing, doing their own own learning material. I need yeah. to hear more about Finland, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but that's true. Okay, fantastic. Great, so that's one idea to explore, and um, I have another seven minutes to talk to you, and uh, precisely uh, I'll invite especially Finland to uh, pay attention to this, uh, communication channels. So we at the education team need to hear from you regarding what initiatives and what fantastic projects you are carrying out. So how can you communicate with us? Um, the first means of communication that we really want to push and make sure that uh, if you're interested in education you participate in is a survey that uh, we have uh, launched recently, uh, a, week, a week ago, and uh, we are requesting that as many people from the community and even people that are not from the community, so if you're in touch with teachers and other people that uh, have a vague idea of what Wikipedia and education could mean, um, invite them to take the survey so that they can give us their opinion and we can have a better idea of what is uh, happening regarding the idea of using Wikipedia in education. So 
um, I, w I want to invite you to participate in the survey. If um, you are interested, we could have a focus group, group right here probably on Monday and uh, have a, maybe five, six, ten people uh, talk about uh, Wikipedia and education and see what your thoughts are. Uh, and if you're interested, please reach out to me today, tomorrow, on Sunday, so that on Monday we can uh, sit down and have some time and, and talk about this in more detail. Hi. Yes? What is there a deadline? Uh, so we, we want to do that within the next three weeks, to have the survey data uh, by the next three weeks. So, okay. the, yeah? the survey is too long. Yes, it is long. <laughs> it's a survey. Not but is it at some point If you really want to advertise it, measures your strength of character. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to like one or two hours on a survey, it makes no sense. I think if you want to make it more successful, it's... Don't be such, such short-fused. It measures your strength of character. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, we try. <laughs> Maybe next year we'll do better. Th this is our attempt well this year. Yeah. <laughs> I really try to sell it to my community members, but every time after, after 10 minutes, I'm but going to give up. So that's good feedback, actually. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, okay, when the, when the survey is too short, you can start if thinking you want that the results that you're getting hour. are not what you're actually uh, wanting to get. So, you know, that's, that's the answer to that. So, yeah, apologies if it's too long. Um, <laughs> We're trying to get as much data as we can. Of yeah. course, but if you, if it really want to be successful, it should be like much Sorry? more shorter. Let's keep this topic for this group maybe, <laughs> and you can talk about it later because Vahid has more. Uh, uh, yeah, four more minutes, and Vasya has a comment. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Survey adding that the information that it, it will take you like forty to sixty minutes. Yes, yeah, so like so okay. people allocate this time and not get. Angry after okay. Yeah. Yeah. This will be a long survey. Sit down, yes, and buckle your belt. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, is everyone aware that there's a programs and event dashboard? So programs and event dashboard is uh, yes. Okay, great. So uh, this is very important. It's uh, a tool we are promoting. And uh, just to give you one example, the executive director of the Argentinian chapter was actually crying with joy when she tried this because at last <laughs> she didn't have to use a calculator to add all the bytes of all the contributions. She just used one, uh, one tool, the programs and event dashboard, and all the contributions were summed up at once. So this is just one practical example of uh, how useful this is. There's a comment there? And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we uh, improved uh, some little, uh, another module, and it is more particular for, uh, for the uh, program education. So uh, uh, we sage, we, we do some uh, modify of this tool, uh, adding another module. Right, so it's still improving. More accurate. Yeah. More accurate. It's more accurate. Uh -huh. uh, to, improve, uh, to improve the count, you mean, yes. Yeah. yeah all right, yes. I, I want to say that in my case, maybe I understood something wrong or found it somehow wrong, but uh, for example, the, the bytes, yes, the kilobytes uh, of contribution were not so exact in my case. Oh, I didn't understand how it works. Maybe. I can find somewhere something like what exact kilobytes uh, is counted. All that people are doing are all, only the really uh, efficient materials that uh, students contributed. I don't know. So that's why when I tried to compare, I understood that uh, it is a little bit another number when I count it with. Yeah, it's still improving. Uh, as uh, uh, it was just mentioned, we're still uh, figuring out the best way to do it. But right now, it's uh, fairly accurate, and uh, it's uh, for most people that have used it, it's a much easier way to manage a group of participants through an education program, through a, through an editathon, or a glam activity. It's, uh, it's all, all, all is very was very good. Except for the number, Except the, for the, the, the accounting. Yeah. Okay, so that's good feedback. I'll let the, the programmers know. Uh, but if you haven't tried it, you have to try it. This yeah. is really a lifesaver. Yeah. So, one more, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, one more idea is that, uh, for example, in my case, it was very, very important to see the, the last changes that uh -huh. people gave. So, um, it is not so fast, uh, how to say, updated. 
Yeah. I mean that it takes time, maybe a day or two days to be updated, but you know, students can do as the last day everything and you cannot <laughs> uh, check all their stuff. Yeah. So we, we are fully aware that the tool is not yet perfect, it's functional. Yeah, and it's, we don't, uh, still don't have real-time uh, numbers. That's something that we still have to improve. Yeah, we, we are uh, aware of that. Mosen? And can we have a walkthrough session? Just we could. If we find time, sure, we could. I don't know how many people would be interested in doing a real-time thing together. The live people, of course, or something like that. We, we could do it here, we can do it online also. I know, yeah. But at my, from my experience, when we say online, it means never. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do it tonight, tomorrow night. I don't know how many people would be interested to do such a thing. Yeah. So it's Three, four, yeah. Okay. Enough, yeah. okay. So let's try to find time and set it in the agenda. Sure. Perfect. So, uh, one more thing about the dashboard. Um, it's now cap uh, capable of uh, doing edits in the user talk page. This is especially interesting when you have new participants that just created an account. Uh, if you set your Wikipedia right, so you need some admin privileges to set it up, uh, now we can uh, create edits like this one where we are mentioning that this uh, user is a participant in this course or in this event. So this helps, uh, it's, a, it's a nice feature that has been recently enabled, but it has to be enabled in each Wikipedia. So you have to discuss with your community if that's uh, something that you want to uh, enable. And we have a user from Brazil, Joalpe, who already went through the process, who did it for the Portuguese Wikipedia, and is willing to share how to do this uh, with other uh, admins. So if, uh, that's one thing to consider. I'll be very brief uh, for the, the next few uh, ideas. So how can you communicate uh, with uh, the community? Please, uh, Finland especially, send news <laughs> to the newsletter. So send an article. We need four or five paragraphs, a couple of pictures. Explain what you are doing in education so that other countries uh, and the education team can learn about what your experience is when you, ha you are trying out new projects or even old projects that are ongoing. Please share the news to the newsletter for the whole community to learn from what you're doing. So that's the, the newsletter. If the newsletter is too much work for you, please go to the Facebook group. The Facebook group is even more simple. You just upload a photo, uh, uh, write two paragraphs, we're doing this, share it to the Facebook group. But if that's too hard, there's one more option, Twitter. Please tweet to at WikiEduProgram. Put one picture, put a hundred characters, tell us what we're doing so that we can know and we can, share with you, uh, we can share that to the rest of the community. Okay? So those are the invitations for you to interact with us. Uh, we, we want to learn more, of course, from what you're doing and we want to share that with the world. And thank you very much. My time is up.